This is episode 187 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Welcome to episode 187 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Today, I have Jazz Takar on the show. Jazz was on the show back on episode, I think it was 19. So it's been quite some time, about three years. And uh, Jazz is a career entrepreneur. He's a go-getter with a great attitude. He's a condo investor in Toronto and a real estate broker for 17 years. So he's well experienced. He knows Toronto. He knows his stuff. Uh, today, he talks about what's happening in the market, entrepreneurship. He talks about where things are going and how you would take advantage of things. Uh, Jazz is a long-term investor. He's not in a, a big hurry. He's willing to ride things out. And he talks about his strategy of investing, um, how and why that works for him. Uh, some of the stuff he's doing on the other side, of course, as an entrepreneur uh, in running his brokerage and running his media company. Um, I love working with and interviewing doers and uh, Jazz definitely fits that bill. Uh, he's a guy that uh, it's great to have in my circle. Um, just, you know, watching these type of people do their thing, um, of course, bringing them on the podcast and getting inspired by uh, by the type of things that they're doing. So uh, Jazz is a great example of that. And I think you're going to get a lot out of this episode. Uh, just so you know, I'm also going on Jazz's podcast. He has a podcast. And I'll be on that as well. The episode is probably already out by the time this episode is airing. So check that one out as well. And then just before we jump into this episode, as always, I'm going to ask you to hit all the buttons on YouTube. Make sure you're like subscribing, uh, hitting the notification bell, leaving a comment. Uh, and then, of course, audio listeners, rating and review would be greatly appreciated. Five stars it really helps more people to find the show. It hits the algorithm and makes the uh, podcast get out to more people. So without further ado, let's jump into episode 187 with Jazz Takar. Hello and welcome to the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. I have on the show for the second time, it's been a long time, Jazz Takar. How you doing, brother? Good, man. Thanks for coming down. Hey, buddy. Thanks for having me. I'm glad, uh, as you mentioned, it's the second time around. So I'm sure we brought a lot of value to to the viewers and yeah. listeners. And I'm actually excited to have you on my pod as well because, uh, yeah. you know, big, big kudos to you, brother. As a, as a fellow content creator, I know mm -hmm. how hard it is to book guests, get the guests yeah. to come and they reschedule and the set up. I mean, to your viewers, I mean, mm -hmm. I wish the listeners could yeah. see it, like jump onto this guy's YouTube page because the setup is so cool. So just a big, big yeah. congratulations on all the success, man. Yeah, same to you, man. I'm looking forward to coming on, seeing what you're doing. Yeah. You're upgrading the studio you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. so from when you came, as yeah. you mentioned about three years ago, um, it was time. It was just time to to upgrade the studio, do some changes. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go a little wider with the podcast in terms of yeah. talking about all things kind of creating wealth and just documenting people's stories. Like yeah. you and I were talking off air and all the stuff that yeah. you're up to. I mean, I think people learn best from the yeah. stories that yeah. they hear, right? For and sure. so I want to just document that more. Oh, and for sure. And on this podcast, like we'll go into like, if, if you're a real estate investor, I see commonalities, right? Like some of these people, you know, you're entrepreneurs first, right? Sure. Real estate is just sort of the tool. Um, it's you know, the vehicle. So no, That's what I call it, right? Yeah. It's the vehicle. Like, I mean, yeah. even in investing, right? Um, real estate is, I'm biased. I think you're a little biased as yeah, well because sure. it's done very well for you and your family. Um, but it's obviously not the only vehicle. Um, and, and so I think it's important sure. to talk about other other things that you can invest into because then and only then can you make a really quality informed decision yeah. and if you want to make it passive or you want to go active whatever it may be at least you can get more information on all those other types of investments i still think real estate is the best yeah um but yeah, to, to that point i think i think really the best investment is the one that you make into yourself right and so oh, i mean yeah, we could sure. do six hours on that kind of conversation and i, I want to chat about that like because you know you're a guy who who finds a way to make it happen i think if you as an entrepreneur first you make strategic decisions that are profitable real estate happens to be a big element of that you you know you run a successful brokerage a successful real estate team it's a real estate team, team under, under a brokerage, brokerage. Okay, it's, yeah. it's almost a a, a I brokerage think like within a brokerage. A, well, yeah, and yeah. and you're not wrong with that i mean most people do think rec canada which is the real estate company um is a brokerage but we're yeah. under the umbrella of royal page signature which is yeah. the actual brokerage yeah awesome and then obviously jake is uh is on on the big team shout there. out to jacob yeah. campanero yeah, so Jay connected us originally and obviously crushing it in the business. I'm going to have him on here again soon, too. It was nice. I was just driving up here to your studio and I saw a massive, um, I, I think it was a first for lease or for sale sign of Jacob's. Here. Yeah. It was just nice yeah. to see. Like, I mean, he came on board with us 
let's say about four or five years ago now, maybe about in, four years ago. Yeah, and he's, the commercial side, I mean, right? he's, he's the director of our commercial. Yeah. It, like arm in in REC Canada. I mean, he's just doing an amazing job. I'm not just saying that because mm -hmm. he's on our team. I mean, most of our REC insiders, which are our clients in our community, yeah. they they love this guy. He's really boots to the ground, right? Because mm -hmm. he's an investor in himself first, right? Oh, yeah. So he's looking at it from those lenses always. Yeah, I've known Jake since uh, since he was what 16 years old. So you got the juicy yeah. stories. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've watched him grow up. It's, yeah, it's yeah. been cool. I started dating his sister way back then. So. Hey, congratulations um, on, I, I don't know the baby, baby boy's baby name. Boy, yeah, Wellington. Wellington, yeah. awesome, congrats. Yeah, six man. months tomorrow, so. Wow, 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 yeah. how's it been? Um, it's been, it's been something, yeah. Is it what you... <laughs> he's awesome, but he's kept me up a lot. Right, late nights? <laughs> yeah, he's starting to sleep a bit better now, yeah. but uh, like last night he didn't wake up until like 4.30 in the morning, and after about an hour back down. But awesome. I, I've been having a little challenge getting back down myself. For sure. Because so, yeah, now you're a little yeah. bit more wired, right? Yeah, now, exactly. whatever you have to do, you got to make sure that you're focused. Yeah. And, um, I got a six year old and an eight year old. Yeah. Um, people say it gets easier. I just don't. I think it's just different. It doesn't That's get it necessarily yeah. easier, man. It gets different. It gets different. I, I would say, though, for me, it is starting to get a little bit better. Like we're figuring out how to how to deal with it. Right. I think that's the thing that gets better. It's, it's the first month. You just want to make sure they continue reading. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're just checking like, up on them. I how used did to you do it? Like, because you, you had young kids when you're building out your business. Yep. Uh, were you mainly focused as being a realtor at that time or building out the team? Yeah. So my my eight year old, um, he was uh, my my wife took off a year mm -hmm. and then went back to work. And then two years later, uh, uh, the younger one was born and I mean, I, I gotta say like, it's, it's been majority of my wife. I mean, she's yeah. like in it. She's now a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. Um, like if it would be tough, right. If both parents in our, like in our situation, if we were both working, because yeah. I don't have a traditional nine to five, no, you're some days are hours, right? some days. Well, some days are like, I get to the office by call it seven thirty in the morning, seven forty five, and I'm there till nine, nine thirty, Right. And then that could continue, especially if we're doing like a launch of our, of our yeah. condo project or something that could go on till 10, 11 at night. And then that can continue for yeah. two, three weeks. Right. Um, it's tough. It's tough. Like there is no secret sauce. Yeah. Um, know that you're going to make a bunch of mistakes. And I'm not just saying this in a joking way, but it's one of the reasons I like to invest in real estate because I know I'm building something for them in yeah. the future. If they treat dad and mom well, they'll get some of it. Yeah. Um, but most importantly, I know that I got to make enough money because I'm sure we screwed up along the way. So if they yeah. need some 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 psych like you know they need a psychiatrist, they need a psychologist, <laughs> whatever they at least I can yeah. pay for that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a good it's, it's a good motivation, right? Kids, 100%. kids being the why, yeah, think, for sure, right? And and yeah. we, we you know like we your listeners know and your viewers know it's generational wealth, right? Like I mean, there's yeah, it's there's it's so nice to know yeah. that I could leave them with something, yeah, right? If we choose to, and I know parents, and I'm never going into parenting like conversations in terms of what people should do and stuff and yeah. not do because each to their own. But I, I get to sleep well at night knowing I could leave them with something. Right. Yeah. And so like I, I was just talking this like my last podcast guest, like imagine what it would be like if our parents were like investors like this, like would it have, would we have been better off? You know, I think it, so. It would have been second nature. Like you would have been making these decisions. Like I look at, at my buddy Mike and how he raises his kids, like bringing them along on deals, helping them negotiate deals themselves. I like just like, I mean, I mean, I, I'm really built from a salesperson's yeah. like vantage point, meaning yeah. like ever since I was you know eight, nine years old, I was the, the kid that put up his hand and wanted to help the teacher with the book fair and then yeah. 12 selling newspapers. So I luckily wasn't really afraid to ask people for stuff, yeah. to make a phone call, right? Where what I'm trying with my eight and six year old is that like when we go to a restaurant, you order. We're yeah. at a, we were staying at a hotel a couple of months ago in uh, Blue Mountain, and they wanted something. I was like, you got to pick up the phone. Yeah, you asked for it. They didn't want to ask for the extra towels, a, a toothbrush, whatever it may be, right? And mm -hmm. I think that skill set is lost. So to your friend's point, I mean, <laughs> if the kid's learning already how to negotiate deals and just being in the conversations, yeah. I mean, imagine that kid in yeah. 5, 7, 27 years, right? Like, my parents came to Canada in 1974, 1975. Did you say your dad drove cab? Uh, yeah, he drove yeah. cab his whole life. My mom was a factory worker her whole yeah. life. Um, never invested into an income property, ever. Yeah. One thing my mom did, 
um, was because we lived, they lived in a base, an, an apartment building and then a basement that they knew that, okay, when they own a home, they're going to rent out the basement apartment yeah. just to help with okay. the bill. So the only thing that I ever knew about investing into real estate was a basement apartment mm -hmm. that it's going to help. Right. But to your point, Andrew, I mean, imagine you knew about all the types of properties that you can yeah. invest in, how you can create what well, all the stuff you talk about on your podcast, man, yeah. like and all the guests that you have, we would definitely be further along, even yeah. one more property. Even one more. Like just I think one. it's more of the mindset and the thinking. Like if I could go back, know what I know now, or even just, I, I don't think I would have gone to school. I think I would have just gone right at 18 years old and started hustling properties. Yeah. So true because at 18, you're legal, boom, boom. And here's yeah. the thing. I mean, to your point again, like you don't have to have the full 20% down. Like, yeah. We, a lot of people till this day, even with all the podcasts, the books and all the seminars and all the, 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 um, uh, investment communities yeah. out there, people still think that you have to have the 20%. No, you just got to know somebody with it. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, I get it, man. I mean, I was also that kid with D's and F's in, in school. Yeah. I barely passed high school. Um, but luckily I had a skill set. My skill set was talking to people, communicating, yeah. marketing. I liked all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but it, it wasn't until my, say like 20 early 20s right 24 25 like mid 20s yeah. call it where i started to get understand oh there's a different way like it's yeah. not all about working and just trying to save money there's way there's another level to this game oh, which yeah. is how do i actually make my money work for me yeah leverage uh, relationships i think relationships are so much more profitable than just saving money like so and, like you said before investing in yourself is, is the single biggest thing right the knowledge yeah. the understanding and the mindset mindset right. and the network yeah like all, all right. those things and 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 like i mean how many times have you invested into a property or you're going into a negotiation and it didn't work out the way that yeah. you wanted it to or you thought that it was going to work out but you didn't give up how many no, problems have all. you had with certain developments you've done? Tons, yeah. Shit comes up. Like I, you know, a lot of it's like you have no choice. <laughs> yeah. like you're in it. Yeah, right. That's the thing. Like once you put yourself in something, you have to find a way through it. And uh, I think a lot of people hesitate, and myself included. None of us are immune to that. Right. Uh, but once you put yourself into it, you'll find a way. Right. And look, and we're talking about relationships and. And I was just thinking about like our old, like the podcast that when you were on my podcast and you were talking about like your student rentals. Mm -hmm. You're like, luckily you have the skill set of dealing with people. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody's watching and listening, I hope they don't get scared. Like if you're an introvert and you're scared and you're, that's not a skill set of yours. Yeah. The cool thing with, with real estate is that you can always get someone else to do it as you well. You can partner with somebody who that's partner. their skill set. Like you, yeah, you said like, Hey, this is the stuff I like doing. Find somebody who likes doing that. I mean, everybody has their own, their own, you know, cup of tea. For that, sure. That this this feels right to me, and I think if you just combine, you find kind of the 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 person who complements that skill set. Well, I mean, then you're laughing. Me, I'm not a big fan of managing properties, and yeah. most importantly, I can't like I can't picture I can't put up a picture on the wall. Like if yeah. my life depended on it, brother, yeah. like I will break stuff, right? So I just know that there's other people that will do it, and. If it's managing a property, I know, okay, I got to calculate my 8 to 12%, whatever it's going right. to be. Yeah. Um, but I also have just handymen on call and, and, yeah. and making sure that that's not going to stop me yeah. from trying to create wealth and try to invest, right? And so for, again, everybody who's watching or listening, there's a lot of people that you can partner up with from the actual money perspective and then all the work that has to yeah, be this, done afterwards. You just skills. need to have the tenacity. Yeah, it's, it's more just, yeah, moving forward and deciding to move forward, I think. Um, because I see so many I like people that. do it, right? They just, out of nowhere. I had, a, I had a girl on the podcast yesterday and she decided to be a, a realtor, got her license in November, okay. already having a multi hundred thousand year in commission. And she posts a reel every day of the week on Instagram and just blew up on TikTok, blew up on, on Instagram, giving back, giving people value first. And when no one else, you know, would typically have that kind of consistency. And, oh, well, I mean, the talk about consistency and especially when it comes to like putting out content and just putting in the work, mm -hmm. I actually believe that 90% of people would not have it. It's probably closer to 95% of people just won't have the, the consistency. Yeah. Something stops them. Um, but what I do like about what you said and what she's doing is the ones that do it. So say the 5% that actually do it. 4% of those people, 90, sorry, 99.9% .9 of those people are doing it for themselves. What yeah. she's doing different and which yeah. I see you do all the time, you're just giving it away, your, mm -hmm. your, your, your best strategies. 
because karma plays out. Yeah. There's, there's like that stuff is real, right? Like you just, you give without any expectation yourself yeah. and anybody who does do that, it will come back around. I'm not surprised from November to, to, to now call it eight months, seven months, whatever it is that she's done that, that, that amount of deals and that much in commissions because her mindset is let me give away all the best information Yeah, and people will start to look at you as the yeah. authority, right? Yeah, like exactly. when you start to talk about how to actually do content, I think that's the right way to do it. It's the way that I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in the process of doing as well, which is, Here's all my best stuff. I'm not holding yeah. anything to my chest. And if you're a real estate agent and you use some of my stuff, like that's awesome. You're not, yeah. the pie's big enough. There's not only, she did a couple hundred thousand dollars in commission. Well, there's other agents who did that as well. So obviously there's not only $200,000 worth of commissions in the GTA that is going around. There's a lot yeah. more to go around, right? And so the scarcity mindset, I think is what, is what just, mm -hmm. you know, it will, it will, stall your progress yeah. like anything else like there's just nothing else that would stall your progress as much as what I'm, is, oh is for that. sure yeah and i've never i've never liked that I've, i mean i listened to gary Vee. i know you had him on your podcast which was super cool and uh, his whole you know give it away and um uh, and things will come back I, I i always liked that idea and um I probably should have had more ways to monetize, but uh, yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's one of those things where it's it's not a lost opportunity. I, I have had relatively few asks on this podcast, right? But you know, now it's the time. Like we started our campsite, we have our Airbnb stuff, and, and people are coming. And people, yeah, so there's a lot of people who've reached out, say, "Hey, we want to we want to come support, we want to come check it out," and and uh, I find that very nice, and and it's a great opportunity to uh, you know for people who want to give back, they have an opportunity to do that too. And look, you said about monetizing, brother. Like, I mean, I, I'm going to venture to guess you're. 32, 33, something like that. 30. Oh, you're kind. What? <laughs> 36. 36. Okay. Yeah. Um, you still got a lot of time. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, brother? Exactly. And I think what you're doing, yeah. and I'm not just saying this, man, like I, off air, I said to you, like the studio, the new studio is being built. I wanted you to be the first guy yeah. to come in. Why? Because I know the community that you're building. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that you, because you haven't monetized mm -hmm. up until now, or, and not as much as you could have, yeah. you're going to pop way more, yeah. way bigger. Why? Because you're still building depth with your community. Yeah, yeah. Now, the only thing that I think will affect that is if you lose the patience. Yeah. No, right? I'm not going like, to stop. I know I'm not going to stop. I, See, that's the funny thing. You haven't really started now. Because right? people, have, people have asked me, like, oh, well, yeah. why do the podcast? Yeah. And, and I get that. I mean, I... The, the community has been amazing. Uh, the connections, like I used to think, I, I don't know anybody investing in Hamilton area, Burlington area. Now I, I know people all over the place. Like it, it created a community and in uh, the connections, I would never want to give that up. And uh, what I look to do now is make this podcast more and more deep on certain issues, kind of diversify, keep it interesting, keep it fresh. And, uh, and we'll keep learning together as the market change, as things change. We, and I'm just hearing so much more of your opinions come out yeah. as well, which is really cool. Yeah. Like, it's just nice to hear like more of your stories are coming out as mm -hmm. well as just opinions you have on what's going on in the market, what's going on with government, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. And I think that's really cool because you're going to attract yeah. the tribe that, that sure. is attracted to you and you're going to repel the people that are just which like, is normal. Yeah. And what's, and there's, you're not you want get people who resonate, right? hundred like, percent. Right. I always yeah. say to real estate agents and just salespeople, business owners, look, I want to get to the all 6.6 .6 million people in the GTA. I'm just not going to have enough. To, like, I'm just going to run out of some time. I'm just not going to get yeah. to them all. They don't like my yeah. style. They don't like the way that I speak and who cares? Like, at least you're not wasting time with all those people. Right? Yeah, you, you're better off working with the people you resonate. You're going to enjoy it more. You're going to, you know, it, it, I used to try and like censor myself. This was long ago. You know, yeah, I, yeah, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't speak my mind, but I don't do anyone any favors with that because people respect you more when they know where you, where you stand and, you know, they know you're sincere and, and you rock and roll with that. Sure, you'll man. attract the ones that are that resonate and you'll push the others away. But that's a fit. That's and, that's the way you want it. You said it, man. It's yeah. it's more fun. Like, yeah. like I, I, you're always smiling on your stuff. You're smiling now. I'm yeah. like that as well. And then you start to attract those kind of people. Like, I mean, Stephen Rochester's here with us right now behind the, the, the camera. And he, I mean, because of the guy that I think I am, I attract people like him. They want to yeah. work hard. They're happy. They're positive. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are not that, they don't really stick around too long, right? Yeah. They kind of just filter themselves out. Yeah, I love how that, that yeah. works. Jazz, from a high level, just for you know, people, not everyone's heard this, the first episode you were on. Um, 
Could you give like kind of a high level what you're all about, like as an investor, as a businessman, like what are your main areas of focus? Yeah. So um, in, in terms of business, I have a uh, real estate organization that we spoke about we have 54 real estate agents that cover the greater toronto area and they help people from the first property right up to someone who's looking at maybe 25 30 doors above that mm -hmm. we usually generally kind of refer that out um, outside of our 54 agents we have 11 support staff been in been a real estate broker uh, for the last 17 years now. Um, born and raised here in Toronto, kind of the northern part of Toronto in an area called Rexdale. Um, a year and a half ago almost, I also um, started a media company that helps other real estate agents and mortgage professionals produce content in terms of doing the Instagram reels, the TikToks and all of that. Um, but as an investor, um, I invest solely into real estate. Not that I only believe that you should, because I mentioned yeah. that earlier. I just don't know really much about crypto yet. I don't yeah. know much about stocks. Um, I don't really invest in businesses because I like to operate the business myself. Yeah. Um, I just have a lot more fun doing that. Um, but as a, as an investor, it's solely real estate. Um, and I'm heavily invested into condos like um, and, is and, and I, so the condos that I have now in my portfolio, I'm going to say about 70% of them started in, in from the pre-construction yeah. realm. Right. Um, and so the other 30%, I have, I have an Airbnb in, in, in Florida, uh, Orlando to be exact, oh, nice. which should be done, I think in a month or so and completed and rented out. Um, so it's my first time going into an Airbnb investment, which I know you know a lot about. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to kind of go through that process. Um, but yeah, um, we, do, we help a little over 700 um, investors, uh, uh, sellers and buyers every year, out of which, wow. out of which um, 200 of them to 250 of them invest into pre-construction condos. Um, and I, look, I don't think that that's the, again, the best investment for everybody when it comes yeah. to real estate but I, I do like that type of investment for myself because it's very passive i oh uh, yeah I, hands off for the condo a hundred percent right like it's completely hands off um unlike you and unlike jacob for sure your brother-in-law um i i can't like i just i'm not a i'm not a handyman person like yeah. i just can't do any of that kind of stuff i also yeah. just don't have the time like I don't have the time to manage a building with 17 people in it mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, nor do I even want to have the time to manage the property manager. Yeah, yeah, I hear and you. And so it's just easy yeah. for me, man. I put my money in a pre-construction condo, let it do its thing. Um, and I'm a long-term, like I'm a buy and hold guy completely. Right. Um, we did a flip myself and my business partner about four or five uh, about six, seven years ago now. Um, and luckily the market was appreciating. Yeah. But if if we got caught where the market wasn't, we would have lost our shirt in, in that investment. It just kind of yeah. scared me away. And I was like, look, I just want to go back to something that's easy. Let yeah. my money sit, let it grow, and I can create that generational wealth. Oh, for sure. And, and you definitely can. You let your mortgage pay down. I mean, of course, market's changing now. Cash flow has been a challenge because you're pretty much Toronto, right? Toronto proper for all your investments. Uh, yeah, I would say I would say GTA, man. Like I, I got probably about three of them right now in Mississauga. Okay. Um, we I haven't went out as far as Oakville. My partner uh, did something in Oakville and then we have something in the east mm -hmm. in Durham as well. Okay. But to your point in terms of cash flow, um, again, I bought majority of those condos before we started to see these 18 20 percent year over year increases yeah. and so that has allowed me to at least see neutral cash flow where neutral. i'm not putting anything in yeah but there is two three of my properties where i'm putting in about a couple of hundred bucks a month right now. yeah and that's just i guess you probably look at that as part of the investment a hundred percent right so i look at it like if we take one of those it's 2500 bucks a month uh, 2500 bucks a year that i'm putting yeah. into it i get to write it off um but at the end of the day i know also that i'm making on 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 average i would say eight to twelve percent call it thirteen percent year mm -hmm. over year on the passive appreciation yeah another ten thousand eleven thousand dollars a year on that mortgage pay down yeah but i do need to feed, you feed, feed it, it for a couple of hundred bucks but i know that that's going to change as well because as of right now i mean values have still continued to to rise in certain areas in the gta however rents right now even with interest rates going yeah, up, yeah rents are going up a lot they shot yeah. they're shooting through the roof i just literally before i came into your studio brother um one of my agents sent me a message property in milton client was renting it out 
a year a year ago for twenty one hundred dollars a month. Yeah, they just put it up. They had over eighty showings in a four day period. Okay, and they just rented it out for twenty seven fifty. Nice a month, like, right? What is it like? Just a unit? It's a it's a sorry, it's a two bedroom townhome. Two bed, a townhome. two bedroom townhome. Yeah. Um, twenty seven hundred dollars a month, eighty showings. Wow. Right, um, where he was renting it out for twenty one hundred bucks a month, and you know this, and a lot of your viewers would know this, but anyone who's new kind of to the investing world, once rates go up, and I think it's safe to say they're going to continue to go up for a little bit, yeah, probably you know, the remainder of twenty twenty two, in my opinion, and what yeah. all the major economists seems are to be. Yeah. I have my thoughts on that, and I know you. Yeah, do as yeah, well. it'd be interesting to hear your take. Um, yeah. As those rates go up, the people that were on the fence of thinking about buying, and this is what I love about they real estate, they have to rent. Yeah, that's the biggest. I attribute this to you know biggest thing is a lot of would be buyers are now now renters, and uh, and will continue to be, and so that's going to push that up. Uh, makes sense because naturally, um, you know, multifamily buyers they've been paying you know X percent. Now they're going to need rents to come up so that those multifamilies still make sense. Uh, and, or, you know, the values come down or a combination of both. Uh, are you seeing, you know, as of right now, how much of a correction are you seeing in Toronto in terms of valuation? Um, overall, I think we've started to already see like uh, we're in the month of June right now. So in May, we saw an increase of 17%, which is down yeah. from the 22% from the month before. In okay. Toronto, so for, still saw an increase in. We still value. saw we still saw an increase in property value, right? Yeah. The, the this the, is across the board, all all this types is of all units? types of units, yeah, okay. right? Um, and the, and then again, the reason for that is population growth. We still have, now we actually have we still people, have it, yeah. We still have people coming in, yeah. right? Um, in that sense, at least we we didn't the government didn't screw it all up, and like they mm -hmm. still allowed people to yeah, come, still in, people come in, still people coming in. Um, and look, I think people always need a place to live. Same, yeah. Right, where they need a place to live. And so are we going to continue to see this, I think, for the rest of the year? I think we're going to end up in and around 13 12% at the end of the year like of up growth. From since the beginning of the year. Since the beginning of the year, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I think that's definitely uh, possible. I, there was the February peak, right? Yeah. We're down from there in Toronto. Mm -hmm. We're down yeah, from there yeah, in Toronto yeah. now, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and I think most markets are like that. February was a very aggressive peak, so we'll still be up year over year. I think that's very possible. I mean, again, who knows? Uh, anything can happen. For sure. <laughs> um, this, is, this is why, you know, fundamental real estate and long-term holds, right? Like, I know a guy like you, you're, you're willing and ready to hold it through a downturn Forever. if it happens. 100%. And, then, and it comes back up. Yeah, because like, look, I've been doing this for 17 years. And my, I, I, my first property that I bought was in 2006. And so when I bought that in 2006, um, I've, I, I've been in the market for a while. Like I kind mm -hmm. of understand the, the ups and downs and the fact that it's just going to, I, yeah. I believe it's going to continue to go up, especially yeah. here in the GTA, right? Like yeah. we have the people coming in. If, yeah, if that stops, it's a different right. conversation. Well, I mean, so much of these decisions, it's, it's like we're, we're trying to predict what would happen, but it's political decisions. Like for sure. we, we need to know what a politician will do because if, if, certain immigration policies were to change, that would change the, the scope of what we're looking at. Meanwhile, we're, we're saying 400,000 people are going to come to this country. We can only produce 200,000 new construction units. And now even builders that can produce are going to say, well, hang on, we want to just wait and see. So now we're going to have even more restricted supply. But we still we've have people coming seen in. That. And we've yeah. already seen that, Andrew. I yeah. mean, there's been builders who are like, okay, you know what? Because of the fact that the demand has cooled off yeah. there's more months like at the end of the day the the stat yeah. that i'm always looking at is months of inventory yeah because that's going to tell me what type and, of market and what are we at right now right now we're at two months uh two months in a week call so it's not even I mean, a balanced market it's yet. not even a balanced market yet right yeah. i mean to, to your point but we're starting to see it go more towards balanced, a balanced yeah. market, right yeah we're gonna see a buyer's market which is really six months and above Oh, six months of inventory. Would six be months of inventory is really how market. they they, they yeah. classify it as a buyer's market. Yeah, I don't see that. So we're happening. in neutral once we're past three. So three months to call it six months, three months to five and a half months. Yeah. Some would say is a balanced market. Balanced market. Yeah. So we're still in a seller's market. It's just that we're not in as an intense seller's market. Yeah. We're in the peak of 2021, right? Which we were at two weeks. Two weeks of inventory. Two to and some, three some weeks. places were like nine days. A hundred percent. Like Brampton yeah. and Durham was at a week and a half at one point for like a three month mm. period. Yeah. It was consecutive with they were there at a, a week, I uh, call it about a three week period, right? And so, yeah. I mean, that's just insane. That's just insane. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that time is actually over. I, even yeah, as I a don't broker, like I don't like the 21, 22%. No 
year over yeah. year increase. In not fact, sustainable. I don't even care about the 10 to 12, man. Give me my 7% over the last 40 yeah. years that we've seen. I'm happy. I'm good. I'm good with like four to five. Like that's go. totally cool. Yeah. Four it's or five percent. slow and steady. Yeah. It's a slow and steady race. But to your point, yeah. I'm a long-term investor. I'm 40. Yeah. And so I'm hoping I got another, you know, 60, 70 years at this, right? Let's just push it to that. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, in a downturn, I know as long as I can hold on to it, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm right now still sticking with a variable rate. I gotta, I gotta bite that bullet a little bit, but then I just, I lower my expenses in other places. Yeah, right. I'm not a flashy guy, mm -hmm. um, but I also know that okay, I'm not gonna go and just go on a buying spree right now from an yeah. investment perspective or just personal things, right? And yeah. so I think you gotta understand, like people need to understand that as well, yeah. right? Like the two hundred bucks a month that I'm putting into a property, people. Would they think I'm on crack. Some people like, why would you do that yeah. as an investment? Well, I mean, if us we went out for lunch right now, that would cost us if we each had a beer and some and some wings. Yeah, that's probably going to be a little bit more than two hundred bucks, right? So we people yeah. spend two hundred bucks. Yeah, you can really allocate quickly, it. Yeah, right. So that, that this is why the, you have the opposing forces, right? We've got on the one side uh, constricting and spending. Naturally, mm -hmm. people will, especially if they they notice their investments go down. They start worrying about their pensions. People start tightening up a bit which is where a recession comes in. And, you know, so naturally that's a compounding effect because the more you have a recession, the more tightening people do. Uh, that's why governments will do their spending and, you know, push things up. And, uh, but then on the other side, of course, we have immigration. So this is the, the, the ingredient that wasn't necessarily there in the past, the aggressive immigration. Yeah, when, when you spoke about it, like with new, depending on like, you know, if it's the blue government, the red government, the orange one or whatever, now it's the orange and red, they, Kind of yeah, what color like, does that I make? I don't know what color that makes. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't figured that one out yet. Um, yeah. The one, like, they, they can change the immigration policies. Yeah. I, like, personally, I'm banking on the fact that Canada is still going to stick to being Canada, which is la allowing immigrants to come. Yeah. I mean, I'm here because of that. I mean, right. I'm born yeah. here by my parents, right? Yeah, yeah. And so um, I'm going to bank on the fact that it doesn't matter who's in power, that they're yeah. going to allow people to it continue seems to, to be, come in. It seems to be for, that. For the company. But again, we can never predict politicians. These people ask me for my my predictions. I could predict how markets might behave, all things equal, but I can't predict what people will do. Especially uh, from in the last two years. Like leaders, yeah. Like you'd be, Well, we, we say that leaders with quotation mark. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah with, with politicians, what they will do. That's the, the real challenge. And I don't think we, like we all knew it on a surface level, pre-COVID, mm -hmm. but the last two years showed us, okay, there's some, there's, there's people in leadership, mm -hmm. air quotes, that definitely can sway yeah. a lot in terms of, I mean, yeah. we were locked down. Yeah. Should we have, that, yeah. should we have closed everything down? Um, I'm from the oak of, no, we shouldn't have probably no, closed totally everything that, down. Yeah. Like, how do you shut down the economy? Yeah. And only print money. Well, it, that was a recipe. And, and they, people act surprised by inflation. I called this out uh, day one of the first lockdown on my podcast. I said, when you do this, you create an inflationary effect. You can't stop the production of goods and services and print money. Like that means there's way more money chasing less goods. Naturally, price has to come up. I, and, and maybe you know the exact number, but um, I'm, I'm going to say that Canada printed close to like in the last 40 years, we haven't printed as oh, much money oh, as absolutely. we did in the last two so, years. So Trudeau's legacy is that he, there's more debt uh, added added to the balance sheet under him than all other prime ministers in history. There you go. Yeah. There you, yeah. Well, then what do you expect? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Now that's why gas prices. And yeah. look, they're quoting, what is that? I think they quoted about 8% is what inflation's at or something like that. Or like maybe. And that's just what the CPI will actually include. That's what I'm include, saying. That's what right? they're right? I, I've but, long said, like, I, I mean, it was never 20% 20, 20 before. But yeah. since this all started, 20% plus real inflation. If well, you were actually building everything. Bill. Look at your groceries. Look, look at, at your gas. Look at your grocery yeah. bill, right? I mean, that's almost not even see. debatable. I was saying, while well, it was debatable, yeah. now it's not even really debatable. Exactly, right? And so, yeah. Um, yeah, look, I mean, people, I mean, whoever is surprised, I mean, I yeah. guess you just haven't really looked at anything financing in the financing world, but there is, we ha like where we're sitting now, the fact that everything has risen, risen in price, mm -hmm. the only way for them to try to stop this, and I don't know if this is going to work or not, but is to keep continuously increase yeah. interest rates. I think the problem that we're going to be going into and not sure when the recording is, but there was is going to be, or there was already, depending on when the recording comes out, July thirteenth. The July announcement, yeah. And that there's some people are saying a point. 
Yeah. Like I was thinking, okay, maybe they're going to do 0.75, kind of what happened in the state side. Yeah. But I, I have, you know, speaking with my broker who just happens to be really intertwined with a lot of people yeah. in high levels of, of the banking industry. And they're saying 0.75 in July, 0.5 maybe in September, a quarter in December, November, December, yeah. whenever that last meeting is. Yeah. Look, the problem with that is, is that I think that it starts to show people that they're panicking. They're in panic yeah. mode right now, right? And that's so, going to make people panic too. That's going to make people yeah. panic, right? And so um, let's see what ends up happening. I think yeah. the only way, in my opinion, not the only way, I should say two to three ways to, 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 to beat out inflation is investing in real estate because it gives you higher returns. Simple. Yeah. It just gives you higher returns in the rate of yeah. inflation. Invest in some type of business that you can start and create yourself because as inflation rises, yeah. you can actually increase the pricing of the goods and services that you mm -hmm. produce. So if you're somebody who uh, uh, produces uh, uh, some type of product, at least you can increase yeah. the price or you need to get into the, the, the trades and the, the skill yeah. trades, like the plumbers, the electricians, because I think we're going to need all those guys we and are, gals for a long time. We are certainly going to need all that. I mean, there's just so many layers to this and what might happen. Um, I, I've always said, yeah, trades, like we need more of them. Like people getting into the trades right off the bat. There's so much money in trades because there's so few of them relative to the demand for housing right now. I mean, I'm just yeah. doing a little studio version. I can't even get somebody yeah. to put up the, the, some of my signs. Like, they're so busy. Half the people I'm calling are like, but yeah. you can't get me for another three months. And you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so to your point, Andrew, I mean, yeah. we need, we need a, a lot more skills. Now, who knows if that, you know, that changes a bit if we have less housing starts. Um, you know, again, we're trying to predict where housing ends up with all these competing forces. Traditionally, you would see housing correct quite a bit in a situation like this. However, with the immigration factor and, and the lack of trades and all this stuff, and lack of supply, it's just hard to see values coming down for a really long time. I could see, you know, temporary volatility oh, for, for sure. sure. It's hard to see, but I mean, again, anyone's guess, and we'll we'll see what happens in the in the long run. Well, I think about people this. are looking for that word, right? They're looking for the crash. Yeah. I just don't think we're going to see a crash. I think it will be, yeah, a soft landing. It, yeah. I mean, to your point, you'll see, you know, a, not a massive, massive decrease in pricing because we have people coming. And I didn't yeah. even touch on it, and you did, which was the builders, they're not building. Yeah, if they don't start, then they we don't, hurt our supply even more. Yeah. Exactly, right? And so yeah. it, it, all, all of it comes down to supply and yeah. demand, right? Those people got to live somewhere, though. So then we might see more families living sharing units, which wouldn't be great for landlords. Mm -hmm. But then we'll see more people, uh, like we said before, switching to renting, which is pushing those rent rent prices up or saying, hey, we, you know what, let's wait two years and see what happens. And yep. we'll rent in the meantime. Rent, rent prices go up. I mean, look, pre-COVID... Yeah. The, the the measuring stick that I've always used is a one bedroom condo in downtown Toronto. To me, yeah. that's just been kind of the 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 place that I start. Pre COVID, yeah. one bedroom condo, no parking, twenty five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, we went through COVID, end of call it twenty twenty one. We we actually start of COVID. Let me let me give people some more context. Start of COVID, we saw that one bedroom go down to seventeen fifty to eighteen hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. End of COVID, 2021-ish, kind of, like when we started to see that people were opening back up again. We were coming out of that quasi-lockdown again. Yeah. Um, we saw that go to about 2100 2200 Yeah. Right now, sitting right now, they're right back up to 2500 Yeah, so it just kind of came full circle. It just kinda came all full circle yeah. because of all the stuff we spoke about. Mm-hmm. And it might, you know, it might go up even even more at this point. I think so. I think I think so. Probably will in the short term, and who knows? Maybe after people start realizing the market and you know, where it is, figuring out what is what is the Bank of Canada doing, then they might switch back into buyer's gear and yeah. say, okay, yeah. well now we know what to expect. Some there's, of that demand comes there's back. There's definitely a sense in like my community in terms of like my clients, but my office as well. There's a you know, let's wait and see approach right mm -hmm. now, right? That the, the 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 conversations are, hey, honey, let's um, let's just wait and see what happens yeah. in the next six months. And yeah, but as they're waiting and they enter the rental market, yeah. they're also now getting tied into the one year leases. And so yeah. there's a lot to consider here, right? I know. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a little upset. I left my crystal ball at home yeah. today because <laughs> I could have given somebody somebody some more accurate forecasts. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I love talking about the factors, right? Because that's all you can really do, and then. I, I mean, you still don't know. And then you just have to look and say, well, there's probably a buyer's opportunity coming uh, in some some areas, not all necessarily. Um, so if you were starting from scratch right now, 
what would you do? What would your what would your play be to take take uh, advantage of this? Like, say you were just coming into. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, it depends on on if you're if you're a confident person, right? Mm-hmm. If you're a confident person, and, and I am, so mm-hmm. I'm not, as I mentioned, not on a buying spree right now, mm-hmm. but I'm looking. I am looking to see what compelling opportunities are starting to present themselves because I do know that people bought more than they possibly should have because they yeah. got they got you know caught up in, in the, the hype, hype. Yeah. and there were there were comp- look I think all real estate has has a you know there, there's risk involved it's not a matter of eliminating the risk it's about mitigating it right yeah. as much as you possibly can but I think people went far where they oh, bought yeah. more than they well, should without fundamentals too right like 100%. when you're buying for your home a lot of people are like well if my tds and gds qualify then i guess i should buy right you don't realize like tds and gds like how much room is there to pay tax you can go up to 44 percent on your tds um like if you're making in the multi hundred thousand your tax rate basically is the rest of that hundred exactly. percent so where's your money for food where's your money for everything else like i find those ratios silly like they kind of put you in a position where you wouldn't really be able to afford anything else right, right? and yeah. so and so i know there's people that are now needing to sell yeah they can't close on their properties uh, okay and so if i if if i was starting all over again i'm only going to look for those opportunities because right they're going to be in a position to give well, you because a they're going to be in a position and and i know i'm going to i'm going to get some built-in equity in in, yeah. in those deals right um but other than that i'm gonna i'm gonna do what exactly what i did man you know yeah. i get the question all the time from a sales perspective from an investing perspective yeah. if you're 21 well, how would you do it differently um i I liked my my strategy. I mean, could I have been more aggressive in certain places? Yeah, but it just never felt yeah. right to me at that time. And so I'm going to buy a one bedroom condo. I you know I might as go. I might as I might even go as far as buying like a uh, a home with two doors. Like I, I love investing into like a a home that I rent out the upstairs and the downstairs. Um, look for places where the rental income, especially today, I know now I'm going to see neutral cash flow. Like there's a better chance yeah. of me seeing that. Um, I'm gonna ride the wave of a variable, and that's why I'm gonna kind of stick to that. Yeah, I'm very passive. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm a. I'm a conservative guy. Look, when you um, when you're the son of a, fa- a taxi driver and a factory worker, you see them kind of pinch pen, yeah. pinch pennies. Um, that th- for all the stuff that we spoke about earlier, that I wish that they did invest. They, they, I, I look. I saw fundamentals. Like, yeah. don't spend more than you make. Of course, yeah. Right. Um, and and look, there's nothing wrong. With putting in some money into your investments and letting yeah. that grow, mm-hmm. um, but I just I don't really over leverage myself. Yeah, it's smart. Like you know, I had uh, a friend of mine, Marco, on the show yesterday, and he likes to keep his properties at like sixty percent leverage. There and you, uh, you know, he's he's building in some massive equity into stuff he's doing, building you know ha- building houses and you know multifamilies and such. Um, but everyone's got their own comfort zone. But he, you know, at the same token, he also says, "I'm going to focus. I'm going to go all in on my one strategy and give it everything I got with confidence." Yes for you know 10 years and then i can start to diversify and you know focus on other things too and i think that there's there's something to be said about that focusing in on your strategy and everyone's going to do it their own way that feels comfortable for them yeah and 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 that's what real estate offers you there's so many different strategies There's a lot of ways yeah so many ways and 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 because Andrew does really well with, and he did really well with student housing, but that might not be good for you. And you know, I right now need, it's not what I'm focused on. See, there you go. Now I'm, you know, doing stuff no, in I Florida, doing doing, doing uh, tourism, and and you know, definitely going to be looking at other types of things that work well in potential recessionary environment. Yeah, and I think yeah. I think in life in general, but I see it in real estate investing all the time. The biggest poison is comparison, like mm-hmm. comparing yourself to other people, and it's like, oh well. My cousin has seventeen properties, or, yeah. or 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 you know, I met somebody at an uh, at a at an investor meetup, and now they got four properties in two months. You don't know their story. You know nothing how yeah. how they did it. Sometimes they might be exaggerating, and even if it's true, mm-hmm. that's not your yeah. story. Compete with yourself. Compete with yourself and do what feels right. And yeah. So if you're listening to me, and, and and just because I you know I've done really well, I've created a lot of wealth with that strategy of pre construction mm-hmm. investing, but you might say, look, man, I need, I want to be a little bit more active yeah. or I don't believe in the condo market. I've been hearing that for 17 years. Yeah. I'm not going to be here to try to fight people yeah. and, 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 and push my story mm-hmm. on someone. It's worked well for me, but I think you need to sit back and really listen to your gut and say, okay, you know what? Yeah. I, I, I want to flip homes, understand everything that yeah. you possibly can. I would go like, Get get coffees for people that that done really well in flipping homes. Yeah, immerse yourself in that. Learn as much as yeah. you can, 
And then at the end of the day, you have to take action. Yeah, you got to do it. If you bought a parking spot in downtown Toronto when I started in the business 17 years ago, it was 25000 Andrew. Yeah. Right now, a parking spot in downtown Toronto costs a little over $150,000. Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm trying to articulate is you could have invested in anything and made money. Yeah. And you will if you hold on to it long well, enough. It just, You're only going to lose if you sell. Just with the nature of inflation, like everything's volatile in the short run. But in the long run, if, if there's more dollars out there and people still value what you have, it's going to be worth more. I mean, at least if you understand that. I mean, I, I agree with what you said. Invest in real estate to beat inflation. Yes, but not for short term. Like you yes. have you have to be willing to 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 ride things out. Oh, for sure. I mean, and know you're investing in something that that'll survive it in an area that that will survive it. Clearly, Toronto's pretty diverse. And, and look, I mean, yeah. I, it's simple, right? If I if we say to people, buy real estate and just wait. That's mm-hmm. all you got to do. Just sit, yeah. wait. Freak out about all the headlines that are in the papers that yeah. values are down and 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 you know most of the time they they're talking about sales volume they're yeah. not even speaking about about values um, and just sit and wait and just watch and 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 I'm not saying for fifty years I'm not yeah. asking people to think fifty years I'm saying just a eight to ten year window watch mm-hmm. what happens and the GTA values on average for the last hundred years have doubled we yeah. just went through. Uh, a, a tripling in the last five years, but call those or not, like call the last five years, four yeah. years outliers. Just look at the last hundred years in every decade on average in that hundred year span, values have doubled. All you got to do average. is on average. So if I look at London, Ontario. Yeah. If you, if you look at London, Trank. Ontario, you're probably at, in, in, if you look at it over a decade period, the values have doubled there. Right? And, and so... Again, it could have been 14%. Mm-hmm. It could have been like, you well, know you're always going to find those, those, those set of years where things just shoot up. And then, sure. Yeah. And that's why mm-hmm. I don't even like to account for the last two yeah. years in the GTA, because to me, they are outliers. We've never seen a 21% year over year increase. So like those, we've seen that stuff in Alberta, in, mm-hmm. in Ontario, in the GTA. We've never seen those type of increases before. Yeah. We are kind of that slow and steady, right? Yeah. And I guess you can call seven percent year over year growth in yeah the that last was very years. common yeah that's been very common in toronto like even getting up you know creeping up to ten percent but it's it's been in that ballpark it wasn't until like roughly 2015 2016 now you start to see the start, teens start to get in and consistently since then and, and then and, that and then me. went nuts yeah and i never liked that either and that was when london started to take off it was just stagnant for so long and then it, it just it was it was predictable and i liked it and then it went totally unpredictable for sure yeah and i'm and, and look i mean the reason People are wondering, why did the London start to increase? Why did the Kitchener water yeah. lose and, and the Hamiltons and all that? Well, because Toronto, got the central expensive. place, got yeah. too expensive. And so what yeah. people do, very simply put, they start to drive till they can qualify. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, right? Like, and, and it's, it's actually quite simple yeah, when yeah. you actually look at it. It's with investors, I feel they get the, the, the investor shiny mm-hmm. object syndrome, right? I like Airbnbs. Because I, I, I yeah. went to a meetup. I like pre-construction. I like multiplex. I yeah. like student housing. And what happens is you fall into paralysis by analysis. You actually never really never do any anything. Yeah. action, right? And that's yeah. why I always try to, I hope it resonates with people. The analogy of the parking spot, that's real. And, mm-hmm. and the reason I use that is because at the end of the day, when it comes to investing, you could have just invested into that. I mean, mm-hmm. now people are taking it to the next level. I mean, in terms of, and I don't know much about this. And so, like, I won't speak about it too long. Like storage units and all yeah. that. Like when I was starting, I hear in my, more about that now. Yeah. Like, are you learning a little bit more about that? Or uh, I had a guest on yesterday yeah. and another one today, both involved or you know actively seeking deals. Yeah. See, like, I don't even understand any of that, and so mm. for me, I just kind of stay away from it. But that doesn't make it wrong. You like, know what I like about it, though? People are moving, uh, you know, because of recession, selling their house, they store their stuff. Every, you know. Economic downturn, people still store their stuff. What kind of returns are people seeing? I don't know. We ran a deal yesterday okay. in the uh, Illinois storage locker Got and it. 12% cap rate, 12, 13%. Hey. I mean, I don't think they're all that way. I think right. generally speaking, the cap rates are lower, but right. this is like a smaller scale deal. Well, there you go. Yeah. I right. think I think that, you know, it's it's really low maintenance. Yep. Um, you don't even have water and sewer on these properties half the time, unless the office has a toilet. <laughs> like... It's actually a pretty ingenious uh, thing. And I just, I really like the, the recession hedge. I also, you know, there's other things that I've talked about on this podcast, like um, trailer parks. Like those are among the cheapest places to live. In a recession, right. people might go from, you know, B quality real estate to C quality real estate to make their dollar go further. 
uh, if you can predict those patterns, then you can profit from them. And I, that's what I said earlier. I think there's a huge buying opportunity if people do constrict their spending. Be the thing that they constrict their spending uh, in, in alternatively choose. Oh, the, yeah. Like the amount of stories that we've all heard, right? I mean, how many millionaires and billionaires are made, are made in, recessions. In, in recessions? In downturns. In downturns, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know if we're actually really in a recession yet. Um, I think, I don't think we've had two quarters. Yeah, yet. it might not officially be able it's to not say officially, it, yeah. but we can we can deduce. But yeah, a hundred percent, right? Um, but so I like to use the word that you use, downturn, right? Yeah. Um, th this is where you can make a lot of money if mm. you get your stuff like in order, get your finances in order, sit down with yeah. the importance of sitting down with independent mortgage brokers. I mean, I think that's probably the best tip I can give you. As a real estate yeah. broker, I like to think I'm the most important person in the process, but I yeah. really truly believe it's the independent mortgage broker because he yeah. or she are the ones who are going to be able to get you the money. Sit down with other possible money partners yeah. that might be private lenders, whatever it is, figure that out. And then you have all these, yeah. these, these types of strategies. And I, as I mentioned earlier, go with what feels right. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about... If one gives you a 28% year over year return and the other one gives you 26, we're talking about 2% yeah, here. Like yeah. It's not a big deal. You got to go with the one that feels right. Go, go with yeah. the, the one that feels right and not necessarily what you see on TV, right? Like I always use our, a mutual friend of ours as an example. Mm -hmm. Great looking guy, amazing hair, and does a fantastic job on TV. Scott McGillivray does a great mm -hmm. job. But the guy has, he's been doing it forever. He mm -hmm. has a massive team. He knows what he's doing. And he'll tell you, you can't get that all done in 22 minutes like he, like, like yeah, it's on TV, yeah. right? Like this takes a long time. And yeah. so that might not be the right investment for you. Investing into a pre-construction condo yeah. might be the right investment because it's so passive. Yeah. Well, not everybody's looking for passive. And I think... I, I agree there that, too. That's the thing, right? Like yeah. You want to spend your time on your businesses and that makes a lot of sense. So it makes sense to do a passive investment. Uh, other people, they go they go full bore and, and, and they want to be a full-time investor. They're active investors, people doing arbitrage and stuff. Like That's the beautiful thing about this. There's so many ways to do it. But yeah, you're like shiny shiny object syndrome. I don't think it's a generally a good thing for some people it seems right. to work. Yeah. But uh, I think generally speaking, it's probably better to, to focus in on a couple of areas, one or two areas that are yeah. you can really add value and, and, and do step it. Up the, step yeah. up the, uh, the investment ladder, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean... Multiplex investing to me is one of the best type of investments, right? Like I, I, yeah. I'm in, I'm in some joint ventures with people, um, yeah. in multiplex. I love them because okay. of the scale of economy, like economy yeah. of scale, all of that stuff, right? It, I mean, look, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a lot easier to deal with, with in one building. Oh yeah, right. Like a, well, the, and you just hire somebody to do everything. Yeah. Hundred percent. However, as somebody who's starting out, I know that sounds great, and it is. But maybe you don't need to start there, mm -hmm. right? Start with something small. Work your way up over time. It's what we tell first-time home buyers. I understand you want the dream home with the big backyard and the white picket fence. And it needs to have three bedrooms and yeah. three washrooms and all that kind of stuff. But can we just get started maybe with a yeah, small little two-bedroom yeah. townhome maybe? And you, that's Working all you really up. need. Yeah. Um, and then start to build the equity. Maybe we can find ways that you can actually refinance that property keep it now that turns into an income yeah, property to right. get your next property i think it generally comes down to that most people just don't have the patience to let that all play out yeah because their cousin bought a 2700 square foot home and it's you know we say keeping up with the joneses but in brampton yeah. we call it keeping up with the sings yeah my cousin bought a 2700 square foot home i gotta get 2800 yeah. Why do you need 2800? Well, they bought 27 and I got to show them. Yeah, right? yeah. So all that stuff starts to kind of play out. It pe it's easy to not even realize you're getting sucked into that. Yeah. See somebody with a nice truck? Oh, I want a nice truck. A hundred percent. And I need I need the newer truck now. And I need yeah. the ones with the rims and I got to black it out. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. When we found out we were, we were having a baby, we went and we were like, okay, time to get an SUV. And we were, we were looking at some Audis, Q5. And uh, I'm like, we're going to get a nice used one, you know, good, decent price point. And we go into the dealer and my wife's like, oh, look at the brand new ones. I'm like, we're not even opening the door of the brand new one. <laughs> we're not looking at that. <laughs> I used to be in the car business. Like the new car smell yeah. is planted on purpose. Like, oh, yeah. Like the showroom is lit the way that it's lit. Yeah. And they put and a car that like in the exact lighting that it yeah. needs to be like 
I'm glad that you didn't even open it. Yeah, we're not even going into that car. The second you open it, it's fresh. Like, you know what I mean? It's tough to now look at a used car. Exactly. So don't look at it. Gently pre-owned. Yeah, gently (laughs) pre-owned. It's it's fine. (laughs) Um, Anyways, uh, so Jazz, where do people find you if they want to follow your podcast or follow your journey? Um, Podcast is, uh, you know, very simple like yours. Uh, Jazz Hack, our podcast. Um, I'm on all podcast platforms. But I always tell people to start with my website and then you can kind of go into into the digital deep dive if you'd like and just go mm-hmm. to jazztacar.ca and okay. if you like to consume video my youtube stuff is all there you'll yeah. find the instagrams and the TikToks. So mostly Start. long form content right okay. i do a lot of long form stuff i try to do about anywhere from 10 to 12 pieces of content a day on oh, all wow. the okay, platforms so that's a lot of short form too all the short form yeah. yeah i do i do all the the TikToks and all that kind yeah. of stuff i'm i'm not yet into the dancing videos not that there's anything wrong with it um, yeah. but i'm really just trying to lead with education yeah. and let people kind of but the tiktoks and the instagrams are kind of the appetizer of me yeah. and if you kind of like what you hear you'll you'll figure yeah. it out i'm not hard to find yeah your media engine is fantastic thank the you. job you've done incredible there are very few that that do it like you do it thank you thank uh, you i'm glad because i do it all by myself no, yeah <laughs> um i got there's a team there i got the best team yeah. in the world i really say that yeah. like it they're, they're they're just a very hard working group of people yeah, no, it's great. And uh, I was always impressed by your content. And, you know, seeing people like you gives me, uh, you know, motivation to step it up. I got to, okay, I got to, I got to step things up a bit. So yeah, we can help with that. And, yeah. and you, we're, we're, look, on all my content, we give away yeah. all the ways to do it on your own. Yeah. It's just a matter of your time. Yeah, yeah. That's what it comes down I've, to. I've man. brought a, a full time editor on now, which awesome. is a huge help. Um, yeah. And it's, and even then I could use more, <laughs> more help. For sure. But, well, I mean, uh, look, I think, look, yeah. I, your podcast is is blowing up man like and i'm saying that because you don't know Mm -hmm. but when i'm speaking with people like my clients they mention your podcast all the time yeah and so like you're you're reaching a lot more people than you might even know that you're reaching because sometimes the numbers just don't tell you the story yeah um they're they're great metrics in Mm -hmm. terms of the numbers but i always like to look at what's happening offline as well like online's important don't get me wrong in terms of like how many views and shares and saves and all of that. But the stuff that's happening offline, like you say your name, yeah. and people, people know your name because of your podcast, right? Yeah, that's even the coolest investor, thing. Yeah. You know, the, the the biggest single thing, and sometimes I even forget that I, this was part of my motivation, was I wanted it to be that anyone would take my call. I like that. You know what I mean? Like I Kevin like O'Leary that. had that line and it, it resonated with me. Why am I on TV? Well, because no matter who it is, if I call, they'll take my call. And I'm like, okay, well, who who am I going to get a foot in the door with because of my brand, my poll, um, and, and in my network? And I think that's one of the biggest and best intangible benefits of doing this this type of thing is it's just the people it's been connecting me with, and the community is so great. Oh, I mean, yeah, the investing community is my favorite community for one reason is that because I'm also part of other like communities such as business communities, content creation communities. Yeah. Those other ones, people generally hold all their good stuff to their chest, mm-hmm. I find. Oh, yeah. The investing community is so unique, and I think I know why. And I'd love to get your, your quick take before we finish. The investing community, we all remember the first investment that yeah. we made and how scared we were. And there's something about us that just doesn't want the next person to go through that. Yeah. And so we share our mortgage brokers. We share our home inspectors. It's a very share. giving community. Yeah. Do you, do you find the same? Like, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I thought that you'd find that in others, be it, but maybe I just don't surround myself with those kind of people. But yeah. yeah. Well, that's the, like, I just yeah. been to other networking events yeah. and business, like, like, you know, like entrepreneur meetups yeah. and all that. And great people, don't get me wrong. It's just that they're not sharing as Yeah, much. I get a little put off, honestly, when I, when I find people are like that. I'm a little put off by it when they're just like, uh, yeah, I, you have to pay me to tell you that. Uh, I'm very much, and I try, and I don't get back to everybody, but when people or ask me a mastermind quick, to get Yeah, if people ask me a quick stuff, question, yeah. if I can answer it, I'll just answer it. But if it's going to be a long, you know, hour-long conversation, I'll say, yeah, book a coaching call. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But the timing's yeah. not right. Like, yeah. let's have a drink, or yeah. we're here. Like, let's just, you know, you want to get to meet yeah. more people. Um, Oh yeah, man, and and I think I actually put people off in those settings as well mm-hmm. because they think I'm a scam artist. Like, why is this guy giving away yeah, everything? Yeah. Like, they think I have an ulterior motive, and I'm like, no, I don't think you just know yeah. me, man. Like, I like the sound of my own voice sometimes. I just mm-hmm. want to give, 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 and I know it's gonna come back because yeah, yeah. it already has tenfold 
from just starting that content journey three and a half, four years oh, yeah. ago, I know how many people have come into my world because of it. Yeah, I can imagine your downloads and reach is pretty pretty huge at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah. way more than I thought it was ever, because I didn't think anybody was going to listen to me at the start. Like I was like, who the heck cares about what I have to say? And yeah. I know that's where most people who are watching and listening, if they're possibly thinking about starting the content journey, don't let that stop you. There's mm -hmm. someone that will... Yeah get value yeah they resonate they'll resonate right to what we spoke about earlier i care more about what is happening offline for me like yeah. i like you know you you said it that if you call someone they pick up mm -hmm. i like being stopped at a gas station yeah. i like somebody telling me like look like literally a couple of days ago at a red light out of the blue windows down somebody pulls up next to me um and and you know one of my paisans in brampton so it kind of makes sense that they saw one of my tiktok videos yeah. and they look over and they're like man do you do tiktok videos like we see you and i looked over i was like wait like i was shocked That's at it. it i was like really yeah. like it's that kind of stuff That's that i, thing really I like because i'm i think i'm I think it's resonating. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's kind of cool, man, that you might, I might have a 0.000001% yeah. value that I brought to someone's life. That's just really yeah. cool. Yeah. Really cool. I got to get on the TikTok videos. I'm not on that, but uh, here's the thing. There's and, huge reach there. And here's the yeah. thing. Really quick tip with that. Just take your podcast. Yeah. Chop it up. Yeah. And put it on a TikTok. Just start. Yeah. You don't need to like get to do a TikTok live or video, yeah, yeah. anything, work your just way a real, up. Yeah. Just take your videos that you're doing. Mm -hmm. You probably went on for, I don't know how long or whatever the time is. Yeah. Just cut that up and put up a TikTok video and yeah. just put up, you can easily get three to four TikTok videos out of every podcast. Yeah. Same thing that- How I, far I, are they reaching like your average video? How many views are you getting on that? Well, you think? my TikToks, man, I got some videos that are up at like 40, 50, 70, 80,000. See, that's, that's good reach. Like, that's really good stuff. Yeah. And yeah. you know what the coolest thing with it is, yeah. Andrew? The views are awesome, but I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it has something to do with seven seconds if somebody watched it or six seconds, it counts as a view. Oh, okay. So at the end of the day, the so video might have been- So they're actually watching, yeah. It might have been, well, well, no. Like, look, look, on the contrary, like the video might be 47 seconds and they only yeah. saw seven, it's giving me a view. It's the shares, man. Yeah. I have videos out there that get 100, 200, 300 so cool, shares. Yeah. That, I can't do that. I can't meet with that yeah. many people and I will all say at once. The podcast, when I started it, that's how I grew it. It was, it was Instagram, but right. it was people were sharing my little, my little teasers. So that's I'm actually cool. finally getting back to doing Good. those because I have help. So, and that's why yeah. I just don't want you to overthink the TikToks. Just take the yeah. exact same stuff and throw yeah. it on TikTok, brother. Awesome. Well, Jazz, uh, great, great talking. As you said, we could talk for hours, but we'll we'll continue this on your podcast so people can catch uh, round two when uh, next week uh, at Jazz's Thanks podcast. for having me, brother. It was a blast. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Please make sure to share this episode far and wide. Help it help more people. I really appreciate you tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.